Best case scenario, you find a half gallon jug of rancid milk. Worst? Motherfucker up a sad mass. That's Raish Bartmoss. <laughs> the Bartmoss. Data crash rabbit Bartmoss. Guy who trashed the first net? Well, it wasn't his uncle. Yeah, yeah, him. All right, guys, welcome back to another Cyberpunk lore video. First and foremost, I would like to say that there are timestamps below because I'm going to like do kind of a long intro here. So use the timestamps below if you want to get straight to the video. So yes, with that out of the way, let's talk about uh, why I haven't been able to upload. It's been about a month, four weeks to be exact. And the reason for this is because of work i work at a shipping company and without giving out too much information really it's just as soon as black friday and the holiday season started online sales you know and plus covid just the sales online has gone up like dramatically so i think ever since like mid now nah, like early november we've been working about 12 hours at work not to mention it's been six days a week uh so we've been working crazy crazy hours and i was just too tired uh, if you guys didn't know, I record, I write my own scripts, I edit my own videos, I research my own videos. So it, it's, I know like I'm not complaining or anything. It's just, it takes up a lot of time and I don't want to drop the quality of my videos. So yeah, it's been tough to kind of balance everything. I have been able to research stuff and that's why we're able to actually record this video right here, but it's been tough to continuously produce at that pace if i had a team by all means i would be going crazy with these videos and making sure that i'm doing things weekly but i don't have that so that's the reason for me taking so long when it comes to uploading videos with that being said I, I do appreciate the comments i've been seeing like i see a notification on my phone uh, i have the youtube studio app so i do see the comments like you know oh i can't believe i haven't found this channel yet i'm glad that i did things like that are just encouraging to know that the channel is kind of doing what i wanted to do um which is grow so uh, thank you guys I, I think i reached a 250 mark or I think we're at 270 yet. Like recording this video, I'm at like 271 or something like that, which is fantastic because um, I, I had a goal for myself, which was by mid December to be at like 250. So we're 20 ahead of schedule for uh, 2021. So thanks guys to everyone who subscribed. Thank you for being patient. And of course, keep uh, putting out comments because that's one way I know that these videos are you know, relevant in a way. Um, I mean, lore videos are technically timeless because the game itself may die out, but talking about lore is something that should be timeless. Anyways, I've talked enough about my personal stuff and I guess behind the scenes stuff. And again, I just wanted to thank you guys. Happy holidays um, and be safe. Be safe out there. There are crazy drivers. Well, I say drivers, but people in general are crazy, aka Johnny Silverhand. But you know, he doesn't exist for another 50 years. Okay, I'll shut up now. Let's get on to the video. So at this point, many of us know who Raish Bartmoss is. You definitely, you've heard of his name. If you played Cyberpunk 2077, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm a Raish Bartmoss fanboy. I am like literally, uh, I would make a fan club for this guy. Uh, I don't know how to make fan clubs these days. I think that was like a high school thing, but whatever. Yes, let's just call my channel Raish Bartmoss Fan Club. Okay, well, no, let's not do that. But you guys get what I'm saying. Like in a lot of my videos, I talk about Rage Bartmoss. Um, him and Morgan Blackhand are like my favorite characters. Anyways, yeah. So you, if you played Cyberpunk, you know who this guy is. If you've played that mission with, uh, what's his name again? Nyx. Yeah, if you played that mission, you've seen him in the fridge. Johnny Silverhand. I put that in the intro of my video. Johnny Silverhand talks a little bit about Rage Bartmoss. So there is backstory about this guy. And I guess with me, my interest peaked with this character because of the fact that every book I read, every source book I've read, his name is brought up about being an infamous Netrunner, about being the very best there was. Like, so if Morgan Blackhand is the best solo character, like there is, then Rage Bartmas is the best Netrunner to have ever existed. I know Altira Cunningham can technically be up there because she created Soul Killer, but in the books, they keep talking about Raish and how he is the best. So I'm just going to leave that out there. Actually, let me know in the comment section below. Does Raish Bartmoss come second to Altira Cunningham? 
because she created Soul Killer, or which would you know would Raish Bartmoss be first? I don't know because right now Raish is technically dead and Altira is alive. So would that make her first? Anyways, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and let's talk about it. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's talk about his early like life. All right, Raish Bartmoss was he was a very very troubled kid but he liked to tinker and mess around with computer parts which then led him to the net this is honestly something i would like to say but the earliest source or earliest childhood lore we get about uh Raish bartmas is the fact that he started running the net at the age of four there's nothing else there's it doesn't tell us how his like family was it doesn't tell us about how like you know why he picked the net it's just he started running the net at the age of four according to spider murphy and and that's all we get about his early childhood i mean of course we get little snippets of him hacking corporations in his early teens but beyond that we don't know why he is the way he is or how he became that good i mean I guess it makes sense if you picked something up at the age of four and stuck to it for i don't know like 10 plus years well no i think Raish dies in like his late 20s early 30s so he would have been doing it for at least 25 plus years and if you're doing anything for 25 plus years you're gonna be damn good at it now besides the fact of us knowing that he started running the net at the age of four according to the bart moss's guide to the net spider murphy found bart moss for the first time when he was 17 years old so this is the first time any of the uh, main all-star crew cast characters encounter bart moss so 17 years old was um the age of bart moss at this time now we don't get much else but she does go on to say that she has that he had already been running the net for 13 years and that's the reason why i was like okay well then he started when he was four there's just it's just math this is even crazier okay when we find out that spider murphy at that time when she first met bart moss she was 13. so for as long as she had been alive he was already running the net so literally at this point he was already god tier hacker mode probably like those guys who are trying to always get into your blizzard account well they always get your blizzard account i don't know why blizzard needs to update that so somewhere in his youth okay and I, again this is why it's all blurred out he just begins to hate corpos and that's it like it doesn't tell us why it, it's not like it says that oh his father worked for arisaka and neglected him or neglected his family there was no talk of that. It's just Bart Moss was the type of person who just hated corpos. And I guess I'm gonna throw in my own kind of uh, perspective on this. And that I, I think the reason why he began to hate the corpos was because of the fact that he was hacking and seeing all the things they were doing behind the scenes. So if, I don't know, like for example, if you found out that uh, governments, well, actually we know that governments are kind of bad and evil but let, let's say you find out your favorite corporation is out there actually doing terrible things like I, I remember growing up all my life the china sweatshops with nike was always a thing and then people would always talk about boycotting them but i don't know but they never do because everyone still has nike on them but you got my point like there are people who go extreme with it and bart moss is one of those people who's like i'm now gonna mess up every corpo out there through the net so that's what happened with him i think is that he saw all the dirty laundry these corporations were hiding behind the scenes and he just saw them all so he was like screw these guys these guys are all liars i hate them all and yeah and that's why he hates corpos he hates them honestly as much or more than johnny silverhand that's just again something of my opinion if you guys think otherwise you know maybe by the end of these um videos you you may think the same thing but i do personally believe after reading all the source books about bars moss bars moss about bars moss oh my god i said it again bart moss that he definitely hates the corpos more than johnny does so bart moss in this book um was actually explaining that he was not always hell bent on destroying corporations because apparently at one point he went straight as in he worked for a company he did it for a few years but honestly 
bad habits die hard after all. I found that really cool because for a person who really hates corporations, he didn't just hate them and never give it a shot. He actually tried and he realized that no matter where you go, corporations are just evil and they're bad. Now we can't talk about his early life without discussing some of his homies. At this point, I would say Raish's closest friend is Spider Murphy. The fact that the book is technically was technically made public by Spider Murphy on Raish's behalf is proof enough. This is the last piece of work he published before he died. So if they aren't homies at this point, honestly, I don't know what you would call a close friend. While reading the book, you also get the sense that Spider Murphy and Raish Bartmoss definitely spent a lot of time running the net together. She even had insights on what Raish was possibly thinking when he did certain things, almost like a friend who could finish your sentences. This makes a lot of sense given that Raish and Spider Murphy became some of the most well-known runners in the history of the net. At first, I thought their relationship was like possibly a romantic one. I mean, come on, look at Murph. Look at her. I mean, I don't know if, if, if Raish is like into guys or girls, it never really said, but like, if he was, you know, into women, you know. So that's what I thought. However, as I read, I realized Raish didn't seem like the type to be able to have a relationship. He spends way too much time thinking and being in the net, never really having time for, you know, a physical relationship. But then again, there are dolls and brain dances and cyberpunk, so maybe. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, back to the main point. After reading a bit more, it became obvious that the relationship was more like a mentorship kind of thing. Their trust for each other was pretty surreal. Speaking of really great netrunners, we can't forget about Altira Cunningham. Johnny's main girl, or side girl, I guess. I don't know. Johnny's confusing. Also kind of interesting that Johnny would claim that when Alt was physically alive, she was considered the best netrunner in all of Night City. Maybe it was his ego. No, no, no. It was it was definitely his ego. I mean, the fact that Alt is alive may be what makes her the best netrunner currently, but I do not think she is the best netrunner of all time. That title of GOAT definitely goes to Bart Moss. Alt and Raish kind of have a mutual respect for each other. And if you guys have watched my Corpo, my Arisaka like lore videos, I talk a little bit about how it was actually Alt who convinces Raish Bart Moss to join Militech's side. And that's, again, a testament to their respect for one another. It's not, again, like a, a, a romantic thing by all means, because that's just not what, it's not Raish's style. So he's definitely more into hentai. I'm just kidding. Um, but, you know, like their relationship was mutual in terms of like, I understand that you're good at running and I understand that you're capable of creating like demons and hacks and all that stuff. So they, they definitely have more of a respect for each other. And I think that is where I am going to end part one because there are there's just so much to talk to about this dude. I am also changing, if you guys have noticed, uh, I am changing the format of how I record a little bit. It's not uh, written word for word, so I'm not reading the script word for word. I'm kind of just leaving jot notes, and then from those jot notes, I'm kind of letting my mind go to where it wants to go to talk about the specific character. In this case, we're talking about Raish. So uh, again, I just have simple things jotted down, and then from there, I just allow whatever I've read to come back to me, and then so I'll talk about it. But yeah, so this is where I'm going to end part one. Uh, I just wanted to give us an early preview of who this man was and, you know, when he started running the net, stuff like that, just so that we can get a little bit more about who Bars Moss is. Oh my God, I keep saying Bars Moss. That way you guys are prepared for part two. In part two, I will be discussing a little bit more of his involvement in the fourth Corpo War. I'm going to talk about his perspective and his ideologies when it comes to why he loves or 
believes the net is actually better than real life. We're going to talk all about that. Again, part one was just more so that we get an introduction about who this man is. And again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Thanks guys for the support. Make sure you click that thumbs up. The video part two should definitely be coming up soon because I'm literally recording it after this. So stay tuned for more guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.